This is a video on replacing the R8 Magride shocks um, with the Chinese ones. Um, here they are. This is the front. I got two fronts, two rears to do. I know all the comments, don't put Chinese parts on your German exotic, but you know what? At less than a thousand dollars for all four compared to ten thousand dollars for all four i'm gonna give this a shot can i afford to put ten thousand dollars worth of shocks on this car yes i can do i think it's uh an outrageous price yes i do so i'm willing to give this a shot anyway first step is to check the car off the ground and get this front wheel off this is the front uh, left side driver's side all right, now that the wheel is off, um, you got to get the inner fender well, splash guard, whatever you want to call it off. And it, just going around here, you just got a bunch of uh, Torx head screws all over the place here. I think there's like 15 of them, but I'll get you a final count. Anywhere you see one of these Torx uh, screws, just all over. Just pull all those off and pull the plastic splash guard off. Okay, the splash guard is out. Uh, it was, in fact, 18 screws. Um, There's a couple different lengths, a little bit longer ones and uh, shorter ones. There's four shorter ones, and they went um, right here and right here and on the uh, plastic part of the fender right here. Everything else is uh, the longer ones. We have a real good look in here now at the shock, and I don't, I don't know what the heck this is. This is uh, this is definitely not coming from the factory. Um, I have to do some research on what the heck that would be and rewire that. A janky looking wiring job I've done up here. Um, but anyway, here's the shock. We'll be able to get to the upper bolt up here and the connector, and also the lower bolt down here. Um, right here and you can see there's a drop of fluid coming off of this one come to find out I think this is the only one I have that is that is leaking but I'm just gonna go ahead and replace all four at the same time and uh, just kind of document how well these uh, Chinese made guys go um, and I'll hold on to these um, just in case anyway I'm gonna disconnect this next and um, pull the uh, bottom bolt out right here. And oh, by the way, one last thing all those Torx screws, all these are T30. You could pull all the plastic out of the boot, the trunk, the front trunk, whatever the heck you want to call it, the hood. Um, I'm opting not to do that. You can get on this uh, from underneath here and do just a couple clicks at a time and get this off. It might take another couple minutes to get this bolt out um, versus like 20 minutes to pull all that plastic out of the hood. So this is the way we're doing it. You can see the connector is off and I'm loosening this top bolt right now. Okay, both of the bolts are out. The uh, top bolt is out. The uh, bottom bolt right here is out. Um, both of those are 18 millimeter. Forgot to mention, I would, rec I would recommend jacking up the other side as well uh, just to get the weight off of it. I think the, uh, the sway bar uh, kind of pulls uh, up on the uh, suspension assembly here, uh, making the bolts a little bit difficult to get out. So I went ahead and jacked up the uh, passenger side to even things out, take the weight off of it, and the bolts came out much easier. Now I'm going to finagle this guy out of here. Okay, there's the old one out. Here's the new one just kind of sitting in here. Uh, to get these out, you literally just let it go down. As far as it can then angle it to you and pull it out this way um, the instructions recommend to go ahead and plug it in and turn the ignition on just make sure you don't get any faults so I'm gonna do that right now okay it's all up and in there uh, this bolt back in um, basically I put this bolt in and just put the nut on a few threads and then uh, got the bottom bolt in torqued it down then went back to the top bolt and torqued it. That way I could uh, move it around just to line it up. Anyway, I'm going to put the splash shield back in. 
uh, button up this side and I'll do the other side. I'm not going to film it, but I will go ahead and film a rear shock uh, after I get that done. All right, now both fronts are done. Now this is the passenger rear, the right rear. And take this wheel off and go towards removing and replacing the rear shock. So there is the uh, wheel off. I'm going to go ahead and pull the uh, rear splash guard. Looks like in the back here, uh, we're going to have to take off one extra piece. This is the air ducting to the air box. It is in the way to get this bolt out. So once uh, the splash guard comes off, we're going to have to get this uh, air intake accordion off here as well. All right, going to take the uh, splash guard off. All right, the splash guard shield is off. Um, all the bolts back here uh, are the same length except for one. One is smaller, and that one goes right here. Uh, looks like there's 16 bolts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 bolts. All right, now let's get this uh, air intake ducting off. Um, at least this piece here. So we can uh, be able to get this bolt out. So I got dust flying around from that. That was easier said than done. Um, I basically took off the screw here, here, and there's one right underneath here. Took those three out to get enough movement with this and, and put a small screwdriver underneath here to, to break this uh, seal or the, uh, the lip here. Didn't break the plastic, just put the uh, screwdriver underneath here to, uh, anyway, get that uh, to pop off. There, now we have clear access to the upper bolt and, of course, the, the lower bolt. So, I'm going to disconnect this guy from the, uh, from the shock. I'm sorry, the electrical connector from the shock. And uh, loosen the top bolt and pull the bottom bolt. Here we go. Okay, the bottom bolt is out. Kind of difficult. You got to get the uh, sway bar length off the end, and uh, anyway, it's a long old bolt there. But anyway, shock is loose with the bottom bolt out. The top bolt is loose. I'm just gonna pull this out the rest of the way and finagle the shock out. Or my apologies, I skipped ahead a little bit. It's it's back in there. Um, you might have to use a jack to lift up the lower hub uh, to get this dog bone uh, stabilizer bar connector um back on that was a little bit difficult but all in all it's not too bad a hot tip for you um spin this bolt the other way mine and i don't know if they're all this way had the head of the bolt over here and the nut over here which required of course me to take this air ducting off which i've i've got back in doing it this way um you can still have room to get a wrench on here. And you got plenty of room underneath here to pull this bolt out. So to do this in the future, uh, you won't have to pull this air ducting out if you just flip that bolt around where the head is on this side. But anyway, that is the rear. I'm going to put the splash shield, splash guard uh, back in here. And I will... Drive this a few thousand miles. I mean, I only put, a, I guess, a couple thousand a year on it. But uh, as I drive it, I'll be chronologically uh, giving updates on how the shocks are doing as the months and miles go by. So hopefully this helped you out. Hopefully you tune in and stay around for some other posts and see how this goes.